No, no! What did you drop? I just watched this big ass dust bunny just float down right above my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a dust bunny. It's dirty. Is it, won't what it, is. it won't kill you. It's, it's a dust. It's got alcohol in it, though, so suck it dry. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, you what know is... how dust gets uh, created, right? Air pod pod particles. And you know what that is, baby? Dead skin cells from y'all nasty ass bitches yeah. in this room. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Zane. And I am Heath for our new listeners. And this is Zane and Heath Unfiltered. Welcome back. How you doing? We have a special. Oh, do, should we say we have a special guest today? Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we have a new face. We have Matt King. Uh, <laughs> nice to see you guys again. I uh, got a hair transplant. Um, I'm gay now, and I reversed my LASIK. So I have a <laughs> um, this is Kenny, guys. We actually know Kenny from high school. Well, kind of. Um, he is from our hometown, and we kind of met him there. And uh, now he kind of lives with us. He's our new roommate, by the way, guys. Uh, so he just moved in with Mariah and I. So give it up for Kenny. Ah, uh, yeah. Wait, where's nice. Matt? Oh, yeah. Well, well, right. Where's Matt? We, like, forgot about him. Matt, Matt, you see, he's he's done a lot of mistakes. He's been late a lot. Uh -huh. we, we thought it was time to kind of put him to the side. and <laughs> Right. We're trying we're trying something. <laughs> temporarily suspend him from the podcast. Uh, he's actually out of town, Um, and we figured, hey, why not just throw the new roommate in the seat and just see what happens? I mean, the world is changing so much. Why not switch up your podcast? Yeah, right. Exactly. 2020. Let's, let's do it. Uh, Kenny actually made a joke. He was like, oh, my God, you had that little K sign over there waiting for me until I got here. So you're cute. like, oh, that's not what it means, but it's good that you feel special. <laughs> People are trying to figure out what that K means. I know. It's so, it's so funny. funny seeing comments, like just, just guessing. Just It means nothing, guys. It's just the letter K. That's just, we just thought it was cute. It fit the theme of the podcast, so we decided to put it up there. Baby, you don't get much to choose when you're shopping at like Kirkland's and Michael's. and Yeah, you get like K's and like O's. So it's like you kind of have to just <laughs> choose it's, from it there. It stands for Kirkland's. <gasps> Shout out to Kirkland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should roll the intro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Huh. All right. It's, it's Coffee Town, Town, baby! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That was me saying ow because I hurt my arm, not yeah. for the song. Um, All right, well, Heath's arm is still fucked up. You want to tell the, right. you want to tell the listeners what happened? Um, so I injured it in an accident. It was right after the podcast. Right, I right, took right. you we to the hospital. To, we went to the ER and uh, did some X-rays. Got it checked out. Nothing was broken, which was good. They thought it was dislocated when I first walked in, but it wasn't dislocated. Um, so they were just like, "There's not really much we could do because it's not broken. Um, you just have to get an MRI." They gave me some pain medication, muscle relaxers, stuff like that. Um, and then they said, go get an MRI. I was like, okay, I didn't realize what all went into getting an MRI. They were like, you got to call this lady. She's going to set you up. She's going to put you in contact with your uh, insurance company who's going to find you a primary doctor oh out my. here. Then what if primary your arm doctor, was falling off? Like right. I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, like this is kind of a, like a, a rust situation and something like that. Like, because we're, we're Googling this shit the whole entire night. We're like trying to figure out what he has. And every single thing that was about his shoulder was like, you need to get it done sooner than later. You can't sit on it because right. it will only get worse. And also, be I'm hard. still confused. Like, why doesn't the ER have an MRI? Like, to, like, like it doesn't right. make sense. It makes right. no sense. Like you were the one store store, but like you're the <laughs> one place this that store <laughs> should have absolutely everything. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So they were like, so call this person, then you're gonna get a primary, then your primary is gonna refer you to an orthopedic surgeon. And then it's just like this, this, this. And I'm like, I like I don't even know if my insurance is real. <laughs> like, I kind of just found the cheapest thing because I got kicked off my parents and I was like, all right, this is just a nice little Ooh. placeholder. Let's just do this until I can find a good insurance. Man, yeah, that, nobody that's takes my insurance either. When it comes to like health insurance, you want to, not saying top dollar, but you want to pay for a good insurance because some shit like this just costs so much money when you have bad insurance. Well, okay, so listen to this. I was going to say pay for the good insurance because when this comes to it, but what I just recently realized is it was better me saying that I didn't have insurance than me saying I did. Yes. Because I was calling places to set up MRI and like orthopedic visits. And they're like, what insurance do you have? I'd say what I had. And they're like, Ooh, Ooh. sorry. Do you have a primary? <laughs> did you get a, a prescription to come here to get an MRI? Is this covered on your insurance? I'm like, I don't know. And then I called the next spot. I was like, listen, I don't have insurance. Can I just come do it? They were like, oh yeah, it's going to be uh, out of pocket. I was like, okay, like. That's probably going to be a lot, but whatever. Like, let me just get it done with. And I was like, how much is it to do an MRI? And they were like, oh, 
Uh, it's only three hundred bucks for an MRI. I mean, that's still pretty expensive. But no, it's like just three hundred like t- bucks when you're in pain, you're like, yes, sign me up. Like I'll yeah. pay. Yeah, yeah. There's a blank check. I'll sign it. <laughs> but like, but check. when you have good insurance, that three hundred dollars goes down to like ten bucks, twenty bucks. Yeah, when you're paying five hundred bucks a month for fucking insurance. But dude, like, yeah. all right. So for me, when I when I when I snap my elbow, I pro- I was paying what like four hundred bucks a month. I've been paying four hundred bucks a month probably for the past. I switched, I switched my health insurance like a maybe year a year and a half. and a half ago. And the bill came back and it was it was like fucking like seven thousand dollars. <gasps> what you but had to pay. What I had to pay. <laughs> but what it what it would have been is probably like fifty thousand dollars of everything they did. Oh yeah. Oh so my. It, it's so it it benefits you v- slightly, I guess. It, it's just it it just makes you pay less when it comes time to pay because nobody has like that kind of money to pay on the spot I, like I, that. I, I totally get what you're saying with that, but then also at the same time, I think they jack up prices because they know they can charge these insurance companies. Well, that's yeah. why you got to go get an itemized receipt like that TikTok right, like, that I watched. <laughs> I was amazed by like when whenever I actually like I had to be an adult and get like the breakdown because I just got knee surgery and I was like, okay, let's do this. And like the amount that they charge, they charge whatever they want. And then like yeah. the insurance company tells them you can actually only charge this much. And they're like, okay, you have insurance, so I guess we'll only charge that much. It's such a scam. They charged me seventy grand for my knee. What'd you do? Oh, what'd you do to your knee? Ben, he got this robot knee that bends yeah, backwards. What, you got yeah. knee implants or something? What I'm happened the there? The camera. A built-in like massager. Yeah. <laughs> Just oh, no, right? Yeah, hot and cold. <laughs> Worth it. Depending on your preference. But yeah, so I ended up getting the MRI and got that taken care of. Um, and then I booked the appointment, which was a whole nother process. Kenny was, I booked the appointment. Thank yeah, you did. You were like, give me the phone. I'm taking away your credit. <laughs> You're getting your MRI and I'm like, hi, uh, this is Heath's insurance. Can you see him? And I'm like, oh, okay, not for another two months. Goodbye. They, yeah. they didn't understand. That you like, answered the phone and said, this is Heath's insurance. That's probably why. Heath's insurance. <laughs> no, it's calling the number on the back not of his introducing card. introducing himself. Like, this is right. what his insurance is. Hi, what's your name? Heath's, uh, yeah, last name, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> they were asking me all these questions. I was like, God, this is really, like, really testing me as a friend. They're like, what's his birthday? I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> When is his birthday, Kenny? April 5th, 1993. <gasps> I, got it, I got it wrong last night. You're I was July like, July 13th. Aw, everybody mark your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Matt King's birthday is July 13th. <laughs> <laughs> what were you about? the same thing but uh, um no i was just saying i got your birthday wrong when he asked me what your birthday was uh the other night and i i said like wow. april 15th baby and he's like <laughs> no. i was like wrong <laughs> i was like Try wrong again. that's right i was testing you I was like, it's, it's the fifth, fifth. <laughs> no it's no i got it wrong i was like april 8th and he's like you get closer. Yeah. Like, hey, oh, you, you play it off and get it wrong a couple of times, so it looks like it was a joke. I'll be like, if you get it wrong in this lesson, I'm gonna kick you with my bionic knee. <laughs> it's because it, I have such a hard time remembering my own birthday. So like, I, like all these numbers and words and he, letters he never and months. Good at math. I was just, gonna, while we're at it, what, Zane, what is your birthday? I don't even know your November birthday. November 18th. Okay, show off. We you have, have a we boyfriend. Got a fan, <laughs> you everybody. have a fucking. I'm like, <laughs> whoa. And now what's his birthday? April 5th. <laughs> she, she April 4th. <laughs> April 15th. <laughs> <laughs> She's short circuiting. She's like, uh, <laughs> July 13th, everybody. We finally got to the appointment, got the doctor's visit, and they checked out my shoulder. I don't know how they can read these MRI things. It looks like the like, same thing. It looks like cellular, like chromosomes and mitochondria is like moving around. And I was just like, <laughs> y'all could do that. That's, That's some molecular shit. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they can see like inside. They go like right, and they're like, how it's deep do you want to? It's so <laughs> weird. Like it's like layers. Like if you were to take the top layer of a cake off and like look there, and then you could take the next layer and like look. You just put your finger in the cake and go. Yup, he has a broken rotator cuff. Mm-hmm. You're talking about cake. Zane understands. Zane can do that. Yeah, he <laughs> I goes. Just, I gotta put it in like <laughs> cookies and cream. <laughs> uh, so we got a molten lava shoulder right here. Ooh. Um, I but heard that. Turns out I tore my rotator cuff. All right, give it up. Oh, oh, you're oh, clapping. Oh. I'm, but, but you didn't break it, so that's good. Right, nothing is it, broken. Um, so I guess there's a couple. What he called it like the sits. There's like four different things that make up like the rotator cuff tendon mess of stuff going on. I guess it got tore, but not all the way ripped through. So they didn't have to do surgery to like reattach it. But I ripped whatever the thingy is in there. Um, So he said, just kind of be easy on it. Let time do its thing. And uh, I will recover within six weeks to three months. Oh, and that's on impatient. (laughs) I'm I'm a little bit bummed about that, but you know what? It is what it is. It could have been a lot worse. So I'm happy. Yeah. Like if I was going into surgery right now, having to like 
Th- that would be a whole nother yeah, process. Yeah, it's very important to just stay positive throughout the right. whole process, though, because, man, I went into a deep fucking depression when I had that elbow thing. Yeah, Because you know. just feel hopeless. You feel like you can't do anything. You, you just sit in bed all day. And you Baby, just can't. I can't even grab my coffee cup right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. I can't but. even coffee and talk at the same time. <laughs> you get a little crazy straw that, like, goes right to your mouth. Oh, yeah. Up over the here. The one with the glasses. Yeah. Hey, Heath, how you feel? All Whoa. Right. Rub, rub it in. He's coffee and talking right now. Yeah. But yeah, so that's good. You got that figured out, and now you're in a slingy. Right, and they gave me a hydrocortisone shot. What is it? Hi- a hydrocortisone? I think I'm He's on malfunctioning. Both. I'm on both of those things right now. <laughs> you're literally getting your your medications mixed up. You've got hydrocodone, you've got uh, cortisone. It's cortisone, baby. You they said hydrocodone, hydrocodone, I'm in. They gave me a prescription for hydrocodone. Thank God, because that's yeah. what I gave you before. So I gave you the right. I gave you the right. But he was looking out for me. Oh, my God. Doctor I should be like a doctor. Uh, I should be a like, doctor. He's like sifting through his baggies of drugs. Like, <laughs> I'm good. Last, like name? Last name? Last <laughs> name? Last name insurance, you said? <laughs> right, got it. So, yeah, they gave me that, and then the shot really helped. So, I'm excited about that. That's good. I can go from here to here with Whoa. my movement. So. Very good. I don't want to brag or anything. You imitated that with your good arm. You just moved your good arm. <laughs> <laughs> Since we have Kenny on the podcast, we want to get to know Kenny a little bit it's more and day. how we got here. This is our first guest. Oh, this is our first guest. Yeah. We- this should, this, should, this should be a very, very special moment for you. It oh, is goodness. for us. Thank goodness I don't have no big shoes to fill. I'm setting the bar very low. <laughs> <laughs> We're hitting rock bottom real fast. No, I mean, we've known Kenny for a while now. Like, um, well, we met him after high school, a little after yeah. high school. So he went to our high school, but we yeah. didn't really know him. Like, we knew of him as a person, but yeah. just different friend groups. Yeah, I always I remember seeing y'all. you. I, I remember seeing you all the time because you were, like, the tall kid. Because you were taller than everybody in high school. Yeah, that's when I started, like, sprouting up. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. but you always looked young. Like, I... I, like I remember like seeing him like damn you look so like young the baby yeah, face baby do. face yeah but I remember the little group that you had uh, uh, back in high school and I just remember that's all I remember though that's I know crazy I, that you're here right now I, I think we both knew we knew of each other but yeah. it's just like really weird that like our paths Ooh, crossed can, after can I we ask graduated. you this I don't think I've ever asked you what do you think of Zane and I because like we were a grade above Kenny so like we were like the senior <laughs> Whoa! I was the junior um Y'all like, want the real answer? Y'all want the real No, be, be yeah, 100% no, be completely real. Like, honest. Okay, yeah. so... Read the room. <laughs> Read unfiltered. the room. <laughs> unfiltered. I, uh, I am a uh, homosexual. We have a little bit of flavor in this podcast. Yeah, so this a little outside perspective. Um, so I was friends with a lot of girls in high school, and a lot of my girlfriends uh, had a crush on Heath. Whoa. So they, you know, they confided Dropped in me. Their names. And then one of my gay friends had a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, at least it's somebody. It's somebody. It's somebody. It's somebody. <laughs> I, so, I mean, what's I, his name? I, baby, that's that's the confidential information. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a secrecy. It's, it's gay code. You know what I mean? We got, like, we got girl code. Gay code is stronger than girl code. Um, but yeah, I just, I always knew of you guys. And then, yeah, I mean, that faded day at, uh, at Dunkin' Donuts is when we actually like became friends. It was so weird. It's like we so have... strange. Like it was meant to be. Yeah, because we if, if like the person that I was with like didn't like keep making awkward eye contact with you, like and you and I mean you're just always like so hospitable. You're like, you you guys want to come on over? Right. Guys, and I was like, fuck. Like, I'm so I get like social anxiety and I get weird and I'm like, oh, I just knew of you guys. I didn't know much. And so we have to like now scoot our chairs like by your. <laughs> now I gave you like an errand. Like you got to like come over and like yeah, something like, to do. Oh, yeah. wait. So you were at Dunkin Donuts, but at the separate <laughs> table. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So was it was I there? And it was I wasn't. there. Yes. You know, you were there. You were getting the coffees. So oh. we used to go to Dunkin Donuts. What year is this? Like set the scene. Seven years ago, at least. Wow. So, well, no, maybe more. Because we knew you a long time before we even started like like Vine or no Vine we were doing Vine. In you the were beginning. doing Vine because my friend introduced you as like that that's Heath from our high school and also Vine. But we still didn't we still like both of us still like didn't really know him. We knew of him from school, right. but that was it. Like so, nothing more yeah. than that. We would just go to Dunkin' Donuts literally every single day and just sit there and have coffee and just like hang out. Like, there was, was nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. All we there. would do. Yeah. So he was at Kenny was at another table with another girl that went to school with us that I had kind of known from middle school also. So like I had you Went to aquatic camp with her. Right, that too. Yeah. She knew you so from when y'all weird. were little. So like obviously like I recognized you guys and like she kept like looking over and I was like, okay, she knows obviously like she remembered me. So I was like, hey, what's going on? Like, what's up? You guys mm, keep so you right, like, cover, so your, you eye, cover your eyes. Cover your eyes. Cover your Cover your eyes. Wow. It just uh, shut my mouth. It's too much coffee. That's good. It gets me jittery. Um, so I, I looked over and I just like said hi or whatever and then uh, we just like sparked a conversation, cross tables, like, hey, <laughs> like just 
across Dunkin' Donuts. And then they ended up sitting with us and... Enter Zane with the coffee. Enter Zane. Oh my, <laughs> this just all makes sense. He's we like, who the hell's with the coffee? coffee. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just kind of hit it off and like became friends that day. And then it was like, you want to go to Dunkin' again? Literally, you guys got my number <clears> that <throat> night. And like, I did not expect to ever hear from you guys again. And then you were just like, no. yo, you want to roll through Dunkin'? I'm like... Shit. He, I, yeah. I remember telling Heath that, like, damn, Kenny's actually, like, pretty funny. Like, he's, he's just a funny kid. He's, like, very quick. Literally and, the funniest person I've ever met in my entire life. Mm. And, and we're like, damn. It's like, <laughs> I'm also very handsome and very humble. <laughs> um, so we ended up just, like, hanging out a bunch. And this was, like, in the beginning of Zane and I's Vine days. And we were, like, coming up with skits. So Kenny would meet up with us. We would get coffee. And he would be, like, pitching us different ideas. Like, oh, you could do this for a Vine. How about this? And, like, was really coming up, like – with different stuff to like just help us because he just yeah. like he was just excited and he was into that. Yeah. Fast forward, he ended up moving out to. I'm telling your story. <laughs> I love it. It's like reading a book. <laughs> like, and then what did I do? Yeah. What did I do next? Ooh, I don't even know. <laughs> um, so then he ended up moving out to California at the same time Zane and I did, but he went to uh, San Francisco and we went to L.A. Um, so we still kept in touch. I would go up and visit every once in a while when mm -hmm. I could. All I'm thinking of now is when you first came to visit me and you introduced me to the uh, the snack of all snacks. Oh, the baby poutine. That and, bitch, uh, the peanut butter pickle, peanut butter hot, hot fries, fries, cream, cream cheese, cheese sandwich. Right, baby. Yes. Yeah, that's disgusting. I, I don't know how you get oh, it. Oh, have you eaten that. it? Uh, no, I. I mean, I. Know, I don't like cream cheese. I don't like. I don't like half the sandwich. I don't like pickles at all. But you put peanut butter and pickles together, you got yourself. It's like fruit oh, and cake. It was, they don't it was go. They don't changer. go together. Like yeah. Yeah. Right. Fruit Heath is out here changing lives with this fucking recipe. <laughs> if you guys yeah. haven't tried it, make sure to try it out. It is incredible. <laughs> don't. Don't. Do it. Well, before you do that, just uh, think, reassess. No. Reassess. Think. Start over. Maybe Start we over. shouldn't put that. Up. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't put that up. <laughs> so we sorry. gonna get someone food poisoning. On this <laughs> podcast. Right. Blame us. Before we continue, this episode is sponsored by HBO Max's brand new original series, Close Enough, which is premiering July 9th. Brought to you by the creator of Regular Show Comes Close Enough, a surreal animated comedy about a married couple, their five-year-old daughter, and their two divorced roommates all living together in L.A. They're navigating that transitional time in your 30s when life is about growing up but not growing old. It's about juggling work, kids, and pursuing your dreams while also avoiding stripper clowns and murderous mannequins. Their life may not be ideal, but for now, it's close enough. Describe the family for us. Well, you got Josh, the lovable screw-up dad, Emily, the stressed out and overly responsible mom, Candace, their adorable and clueless daughter, Alex, a worrywart professor, and his wannabe socialite ex-wife, Bridget. All right, guys, this is really exciting. The entire season is dropping on the premiere day, so you can watch all the episodes all at once. Baby, and you know we like the binge stuff. Just get it out of the way, baby. Nobody likes waiting for an episode. I hate waiting for episodes every I know, week. We, it, 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 it's, the, it's the worst thing in the world. Just I want to watch everything baby, in one day. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme give now. <laughs> now. And just a reminder, the premiere day is July 9th. And just to give you guys a sneak peek little trailer, we're going to play that for you guys listening and watching right now. Ooh. I love our family. Great dad in the house. You look so sexy when you're being a good parent. What are they doing? We're just doing our taxes, sweetie. I've never seen you this responsible before. Responsible and sexy. It's the new me. <laughs> She's been failing all her recent tests. Candace is fine. I wrote my name. <laughs> So guys, make sure to check out Close Enough, premiering July 9th on HBO Max. Again, watch Close Enough. That's premiering on July 9th on HBO Max. Sorry, Kenny, go ahead. So uh, you moved to San Fran. I did. I moved to San Francisco. For I was, what? Mm, for, to, for to get out of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I know like little parts, but like I want to hear your whole San Francisco like move story. Oh, God. It, I mean, it was a wild ride. I mean, San Francisco is cool. I mean, I love San Francisco for what it is. It served a purpose in my life. Like, I, I moved out there just because I was really, like, dissatisfied with Florida, and I just felt like nothing... Maybe everybody is dissatisfied Yeah, I'm like, nothing great ever happened. I'm just preaching to the choir Yeah, Florida, here. it feels like you're stuck there. Like, you yeah. have to leave the fucking it's state. It's easy to get stuck. That's the problem. Yeah, right. yeah, there it is. I just felt like a hamster on a wheel, and it made me very, very scared. Like, I, I felt like my path was just, like, right. already decided for me, and I was like, I don't like that feeling. Like, I, I want to feel like I'm making my own decisions. Like, I'm not just, like, going on whatever I, you know, my family feels like or what friends are doing or whatever so I just like bit the bullet moved to SF and yeah just it like just so happened to be around the same time that you guys were moving mm -hmm. to, to LA so we kind of like but I did have to say a tearful goodbye to y'all first I know that was, it was like, really sad that was rough but then I moved out to SF and then we, I mean we would periodically keep in touch I mean like I came down here I stayed with you I stayed with you you yeah. would come up and stay with me right um but 
I went out there and I was like, what am I going to do out here? Like I just made the snap decision. And then I, I mean, I, I'd had this like little, little dream from like a young age of like being in like voiceover, like cartoons and stuff. I've always been very into cartoons and anime and like, that was always my escape. So I was like, okay, what can I do? Like, what can I do out here? That's going to like feed some sort of, some sort of dream we got going on. So I like, um, I signed up for classes and I've been taking those classes for like, four or five years. You are like one of the best voice actors I've ever heard in my entire He's life. He's so good, guys. So fucking good. Like he can just, he can recreate any fucking character you can think of. So yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of like did my due diligence in SF. Like I was like just cranking out the classes for the longest time, just like trying to make a living, trying to pay for the classes. And then um, I just made like a connection. I mean, it's all about connecting, baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you're I mean, here. once you make that like one connection that's good, it's like you, uh, you know, I got an, I got a, um, a woman who's an agent down here and she was like you you're really good at this whole like voiceover thing like this animation like i think you're really good in it like do you have plans to move to la and i was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no i was literally <laughs> yeah. about to yeah. Yeah. i was going down there next weekend baby <laughs> um so i mean she's like cool like i want you to reach out to me if you've ever you know if you're down there so i that was when i started planning like the move down here and then uh luckily Yo ass is so kind and hospitable. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you're just like totally down for me to like, you know, pave the new way and like create a new life for me out here. So I um, I took you up on that offer and I, I'm, so that's, I moved in. So that's how Kenny ended up in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. I bet you're wondering, how did I end up here? <laughs> so that was like, it's really sick. So I mean, right now, currently, present day i'm getting my studio set up with the help of your microphone right. and all right that. so yeah. yeah we uh we got kenny set up in his room and uh i gave him some like recording equipment that we had for like when i was doing i was doing my rapping thing and stuff <laughs> <laughs> y- y'all remember that right uh so i mean i, I had to i had to, I had to cleanse that with some hand sanitizer because that <laughs> mic was filthy from all the beats you were spitting on okay okay <laughs> yeah um so yeah so he's all set up and uh gonna be pursuing that it's just crazy how everything has come like full circle literally doing coffee talks like in plantation to now us all being together in LA doing like a coffee talk right now on the podcast. Yeah, exactly. It is so cool. I feel like it was coffee talk before there was coffee talk. It's it was. Like, it was like coffee talk BC. Like yeah. before coffee. It just was wasn't it just wasn't <laughs> right. filmed. Because we had the same we, we had the same conversations that we did in the videos back when we would set up that table outside yeah, of Dunkin' Donuts. We really did. We just never filmed it, which is so crazy because like those conversations were fucking hilarious. Yeah. It's weird like coming back here because it's like I love like friends that you can just like pick up where you left off all the time. Like yeah. there's no awkward like, have you been? Like whatever. And it's just like you you guys and I would like talk about shit for like hours and hours and hours till like two AM at Dunkin' Donuts. And then what have we been doing for the past like three days? We've been talking about shit till two, three AM. Just, just, like, just talking. Yeah. Yeah. About talking. nothing. We were talking about Game of Thrones for three hours the other night. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> And we can do it again right now. <laughs> I want to so bad, but like half of you guys won't even know what the fuck we're talking about. And the You're other half doesn't need that? to know because maybe <laughs> yeah. it ain't worth it. It was a very dark, dark time in our, all, all of our lives. When, when that, that was when we all hit out. rock bottom simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. uh, we want to apologize on behalf of the entire community. It's like I want, I want to encourage you guys to watch it, but at the same time, I don't want to let you down. Like just but, stop at seven and a half. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> Y'all need to finish it. <laughs> don't do it. You don't need it. No. It's not good for your soul. It's not. So like we said, Kenny is a voice actor, though, and we wanted to give him like a little test uh, to see what he would sound like if we gave him a specific type of character um, okay. on, on the fly. Like you throughout high school, it. seeing you walk through the halls, I would never knew that you were so good at something and you just never let it out. <laughs> you just looked like you couldn't do anything. So it's so weird to think about you <laughs> You were pathetic. Pathetic. <laughs> I had my oh, own shit going, going on, man. I had nothing. But okay. Right. Look, but Heath, this game is like great. I, I really want to see. Y'all have um, been planting shit person. behind my back. I love it. Right. <laughs> um, so we're going to give you a character um, and see how you would do it. Uh, let's go with post-apocalyptic, like, zombie robot, and you're the head honcho running the, the you know, the survivors who uh, are just com- like it. looking up to I'm you. I'm like, oh, say no more. And, I'm already and, that. And you got to... <laughs> <laughs> and you got to make like this d- decision to go raid the next village and like t- t- take over their supplies or I don't, I don't 
God, that what sounds like a good cool. I, I was gonna go with like baby duck <laughs> <laughs> in school. It's very it was very specific, but I, I like I like I don't try to paint like a picture here. Sometimes it gets very specific in voiceover. <laughs> um okay, so we got post uh, post apopaloptic. <laughs> um okay, we got somewhere right in the village. You said okay. palomia steak, papalapa. <laughs> Hold the onions. Savages assemble. We need you now more than ever. We must raid the next village and leave no stone unturned. Dude, I'm like crying, like I'm tearing up. Like this is Hell so weird. Yeah. Give me the Oscar. Oh my god. That's good. Like it does sound kind of like post-apocalyptic, robotic. Yeah. What about like? Right, I got one. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I got one. I got one. Okay. Oh um, a little kid going to a little convenience store trying to apply for a job. But he's little. He doesn't know I, that he can't get good. the job. That was, that was cute. But he really wants the job. How 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 old are we talking? How young? We're ta young? we're talking like eight. Uh, what's an age where he can like speak? <laughs> Three. <laughs> when, no, no. When, when do people speak, learn how to talk? Speak full sentences. Know what's going on. But he's just determined. Like five, you're like talking, but it's kind of like cute. And Let, let's do let's do six, seven, six, seven years old. Got it. Okay, so he's applying. He's applying. I like, for don't want to look, so I can just visualize. Yeah, I'm gonna close yeah, my eyes. Yeah, yeah, me too. I want to do that. Everybody close. If you're, if you're, <laughs> also, I will guys, also close my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, everybody close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, thankfully this is a podcast. You can't see me yet until the video is posted. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Um, I um, I filled out my resume with crayon, and I'm, um, I'm a very good boy. My mom says I am, so I would like to apply for a job, please, because I need to, um, I need to make money because my mom has fell on some hard times, and um. I just want to help her out, you know. So I, I mean, think he'd be really good. I love, I love how convenient this store is, and um, it's called a convenience store. So I, I'd like to work here, please. What do you say? That's so cool. Wow, wow. that was really that's, that's good. That's a little older. He like it was very proper, that's but it was really, really good. Holy really shit! Good. You know, like when you're a little kid, you're on your yeah. He was around your mom, and you know, I right, feel right, like right. I was talking around Damn. like when I'm on. on that was, really, that was good. really good. You know, I'm it's in a little so church clothes. Crazy how you can have multiple voices. I am. I like. I imagine. Like I, I can have my eyes closed. I can imagine what this person looked like. Me too. Which is like crazy that's so cool i'm very proud of you this is that's just that's thank you oh, i'm like i'm like i'm like, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like yeah give, give me one i wish i could do it yeah, but you try i couldn't i literally couldn't <laughs> oh yeah baby uh, that, that, yeah. that sounds groovy good. baby it sounds like really like Sexy seventies radio host yeah do that um, what was it sexy seventies radio host shit like Y'all know I wasn't back. born in the 70s, right? <laughs> Just say groovy a lot. Sexy 70s radio host. Close your eyes. Oh, you know what? Okay, I got a good reference for this because my dad listens to... Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> got it. You're listening to Hot Rod Radio. Tune in and rip the knob off. When you're going 70s all day, you don't need to go nowhere else. <laughs> That's oh, my so God. Wow. Even the things you're saying, like, it's not even just the voice. It's also, like... He's playing the part. Like the things that right. he's saying make sense. Right, like you rip know? the knob off. Like that's it, so cool. It's uh, it's a big thing in animation that you got to learn how to ad lib. So ad -lib. Yeah. you know, right? And, and yeah, you're kind of like improvising too at the same time when yeah. you're like becoming yeah. that. Would you say you're good at acting? Like, could you be in front of camera and do like a? I'm in front of a camera right now, baby. How do you think I'm doing? <laughs> you're, I'm, you're like I'm acting like I'm having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I feel like someone asked me this the other day, and they're like, "Oh, do you want to do on camera?" And like, it's, it's not a priority. Um, like voiceover's always been kind of like the goal, but uh, I mean, I'm open to many possibilities. We do have to take a brief pause to bring you this episode's sponsor, which is Babbel. If you've ever wanted to learn a new language, there's no better time to start than right now. Babbel can help you become a fluent speaker faster than you think. So a lot of you guys know that I took ASL in high school, so I missed out on taking Spanish. Like every one of my friends took Spanish and like, I wish I was able to take that too. So like. <laughs> Now is a great time because I don't know. I've, I've always wanted to do it. I took three classes of Spanish in high school and I still don't know a lick of Spanish. So I'm 100% going to use Babel just so I could <laughs> actually oh learn Spanish. Could you imagine if we did a full episode in Spanish after we like learn it? I, I mean, it would probably take like nine and a half hours, but I think we could do it. It, it would work. Babel is proven to get you speaking a language within weeks. The daily lessons are 10 to 15 minutes long and they start by teaching you words and phrases. Then sentences gradually get more complex. Next thing you know, you're cussing your friends out in a different language. <laughs> <laughs> and then soon you're practicing short conversations. With Babel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Right now, when you purchase a three month subscription, Babel will give our listeners a bonus three months for free when you use code unfiltered. That's three additional months for free. Free if you go to babble.com and use the promo code unfiltered on your three-month subscription. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com 
and use code unfiltered. Thank you for the spelling. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching everybody out here. <laughs> do you, do, you, have, do oh. you have a favorite character? I was going to say if you have like a dream character that you would love to play. Oh, that too. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, the a dream like role for me to get would probably be on like something like Rick and Morty. Oh, um, cool. Oh. The thing that got Perfect. me into voice Seriously. acting was actually anime. So like Naruto, I was, you know, I mean, that's done now. But like I would love to be on anime, even though the pay is like less. It's just like a really fulfilling job, I feel like. Like I would just, I would love to be in. I mean, I'd love to be in anything, honestly. Just what, like what, give me a role. What do the characters role. sound like in Naruto? Uh, I've Not never seen Naruto. it. Oh, I don't know. Bubba, that was great. Naruto! Naruto! <laughs> I've only heard Scott do it. Because Scott's like yeah. obsessed. I don't know. I mean, anime? Like, oh, you're talking about like... Yeah. He's like, oh. it's like Japanese anime, right? Like Yeah, so I mean like it starts off in Japanese. That's why it's like it's a lot harder, but you get paid less. But it's like you, you have to dub over what's already been animated. So you have to make sure that your mouth is moving to the same movements as oh, the characters. What it's is a lot like, harder. I thought it... I, yeah. Weird. I thought the, the voice comes first and then the... It does, it, but in Japanese... They animate it from the Japanese voice comes first because it's from Japan, and then they animate it, and then when it's translated to English, you have to do it the, the opposite. Yeah, the animation's already oh, there. Oh my! Oh. Oh, hold on. So, so they on their end, they must have had to like move the mouth exactly what they like. Yeah, what? they got it. They have a monitor. They see the animation already because it's already been created, so they got to match it to it. But I remember, like, I I just that makes remember the job so much harder though. I feel. Yeah. yeah. It does. It, it's it's a lot. It's harder and it's less money. But it's like it's just you have to be. It's like a passion project. You yeah. gotta like you gotta like love that genre. So like, what what does like a um like a character in that sound like? I mean, I don't know Japanese, but like I could do like one line because I remember I used to start. I started watching it in subtitles. So that's how you watch like most anime uh -huh. before before the English voice yeah. gets dubbed over. So I mean, like I used to watch it in Japanese before I would watch it in English. Uh -huh. So I picked up like random little like. Just little sentences here and there. So I remember there was one, and uh, I'll do the translation first, because uh, this guy has this like ninja technique, and it's yeah. right, right, right. There was this one character, and he had uh, uh, in English it would be referred to as a fire style uh, fireball jutsu, and in <laughs> in Japanese that was katon gokaku no jutsu. Whoa, that like wow. literally sounds like legit. Yeah, <laughs> like a character, like. Obviously, I know that's what you do, but like that, it it sounds it's so good. Like this is our Kenny. Yeah, like, this is this so is crazy. Kenny. This is it's why like... we have the K in Unfiltered. <laughs> I mean, right there. It was it's all him, babe. So crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's 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 a fun little it's a fun little rewarding gig. I like it. Well, I hope your journey out here leads you to somewhere successful. Well, thank you guys and for being a part of my. Journey. We're proud of you. Thank you. It's it's just cool to see someone like you, like because you're you're such a fucking sweet person. You deserve everything you have right now. Seeing you out here and like are on this path that's so i just cool. like that like you did your thing in sf and like now it felt like it was the end of that chapter now this is the beginning of like a new chapter that's just going to go even further everything yeah. feels really natural and i mean like you guys have a lot to do with that i mean like if i didn't have anyone down here i don't know i don't know what moves i could have made or like what i had at my disposal like i don't know if i would have just figured it out or if i would have like held back so i mean i appreciate you guys everything so everything much. happens for a reason though it's like, everything happens for a reason like when heath and i came out here we were just like fuck we don't really know anybody out here but yeah at least you know at least uh, we had each other and i feel like that was like huge because i wouldn't have been able to move out here by myself i, I would have know. never i done literally that. don't know how mariah did it Me i neither. actually don't oh my god i have no idea. oh you moved out here by yourself with, with like 500 bucks in her pocket with 200. no wait how the fuck did wow. you do that i feel like that's really hard i mean you to san francisco too but like that's i had a nuts. little more than 200 dollars but <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right <laughs> yeah it, it's crazy though like i don't really tell anybody about that I just but I, I bet you look back, now. though, and, like, it's, like, it, I feel like it prepares you for what's ahead because you look back and you're, like, look at what I've already done yeah, by I, myself. That's what I, I, like, especially, like, since meeting you, I have to, like, look back at, like, okay, I came from this. Like, look how far mm -hmm. I got. Like, I have to, like, be patient with, like, my journey and stuff like Would that. Would you want but, to yeah. share your story and journey here? <laughs> Sure. Oh, yay. No, it's nothing crazy. It's just like, whoa, what no, the No, it's it's fucking crazy. Okay, so oh, it's crazy. Why have we never no, talked about this yet? I don't know. Oh, Mariah's so humble. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll just so, move on then. All right, so <laughs> um first of all, the whole LA scene, um, the only thing I knew about LA now I'm realizing, like back then, is that what I saw on Tumblr, literally just palm trees and like the grove, the grove. That's all <laughs> I knew. Like, I don't know how I had this fantasy of like, I want to go to LA, I want to go to LA. Um, so I started dancing professionally at 18 and I was booking jobs in New York. Like every audition I went on, I booked it. Like I booked so many jobs in New York. It was so easy. 
And then I was like, all right, let me go out to LA. Like I want like a, like a little bit of a challenge. My sister and I decided to go on vacation in August of 2015. Does that make, that adds yeah. up, right? Yeah. August of 2015, we came out for a vacation. We ended up staying like, it was like an hour from Hollywood because I didn't know anything about the area. Like it was LA so is far. so huge. That, it's like, so big. You could yeah. be somewhere in considered Los Angeles, but you'll be it's so far. an yeah. hour from like being to Hollywood. Right, yeah. exactly. It's so so crazy. we stayed on the outskirts and we get there and I'm looking up things to do around the area. And I find this dance studio, like a kid's dance studio. And I told my sister, I was like, let's walk to the studio and just see if they're like hiring. And, um, cause and I told just, myself, and you're on vacation, I'm right? on vacation. Yeah. Right. So, um, we end up walking like an hour and a half to this random studio that I know nothing about. I just made sure they were legit. Cause I told myself, don't move to LA unless you have a, a job. Yes. yes. And, um, so I walked into the studio and I said, hi, I was just wondering if you guys are looking for, um, a teacher, like I'm looking to get a job, like blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, what do you teach? And I said, acrobatics and whatever you need me to teach. She goes, oh, well, we have an acro class in about an hour. If you want to come teach that, we'll see how you do. I didn't tell her I'm not from that. That fast. Well, she, that's what, yeah, they like, I don't know. They're very like laid back and like family oriented. I don't know. It was, it's a great studio. So she goes, well, we have a, a, class if you want to teach it in an hour I was like okay so my sister and I were like just, my sister was like just do it just do it so I ended up teaching this class the kids love me the owners love me she sits me down she offers me the job and I was like um okay well I was Here's like I'm actually on vacation <laughs> and I live across the country you, like, you look like a crazy lady probably yeah, where I'm yeah. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I live across the country like I live in Pennsylvania I was like but if you can guarantee me the job I'll move here whenever you need me to and it was August she goes can you be here in September and I said yeah didn't Whoa. tell my parents God. I said yep damn that's like so cool like when someone's like that interested in you and they're just like you have the that's job just yeah. really good so I didn't tell my parents and my sister was like just wait until you till we get home and we'll tell them I was like okay so vacation's over we go back to the house and I was like so we walked into the sand studio and I told them the whole story and they were like what and I was like exactly how you guys reacted I was like yeah I was like can I can I go like I think I'm gonna go I think I was 20 I was 20 at the time or 21 and I was like can I go and then um everybody told me back home not my parents but like my peers and stuff were like, you know, you need like $10,000 to move there. And I was like, <laughs> I had $200 in my bank account. My parents helped me book a flight. We booked an Airbnb for me in the meantime until I found, once again, didn't know how much rent was in yeah. LA. I had $200 and a credit card and that was it. So my parents were like, okay. Like they, were like, they were like, I knew you were going to go anyway. So just let's pack your stuff. Let's book you a flight. We looked up this Airbnb and it was like $100 a week. And it because Not it was under because it was under construction. Oh, uh, so there was there, there was no roof. There was no right next to my eyes bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I fly to L.A. in September. I get to this house at like ten o'clock at night, and nobody's in the house. It's pitch black. There's no electricity. There's no kitchen. Like it's under construction. Jesus. So I just walk in, and I'm, the guy was just texting me the information like, "Oh, you're just pick any of the rooms. Like no one's in there. There's like." a half a mattress on the floor. There's like nothing, just that mattress on the floor. And I was like, okay. And I like tried to avoid telling my parents the circumstances. I was like, oh yeah, it's yeah. a nice Oh house, my God, whatever. it's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. That's I, really cool that you didn't even like bring that up to your parents. So like, like 99% of the people would be like, this sucks. I hate it here. But like, right. you're just like, it's gonna worry look, them. we got yeah. it. And it's like, you were determined to just make it yeah. work. And like, that's, and really, then that's once, really awesome. Once I like told my parents, they were like, like, I, I love that my parents were just like, you'll figure it out. Like, you're going to figure it out. We're a phone call away. Like, you'll figure it out. I have the studio to go to. Like, I started work right away. Yeah. So I ended up, like, going to the studio and stuff. But um, then I lived in that Airbnb for, like, six months. And then he goes, okay, so we sold the house. So is there anywhere else that you can go? And I said, no. Like, I didn't find an apartment. I didn't realize rent was $2,000 a month. I wasn't making close to that. And then I was like, no. And he was like, okay, well, my brother's a realtor. There's another house under construction. Do you want to move there? I was like, I guess. I go there, no bed, no closet. <laughs> so it's no exactly kitchen, like what you were in the before. The same thing. Right. But I was so grateful for this guy. And like, he's cover your ears now. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. 
but they would come in and out like construction guys and I would just like I didn't have a car either so I would just walk outside for like hours just to avoid the workers because I was scared I would walk to work I got a job at Panda Express I started working there for a year or two and I once I saved up more money and I can afford a little bit more rent one of the moms at the dance studio was like oh I have a back house that you can move into which is basically like a studio it's just Mm -hmm. one room and a kitchen but once I had a kitchen I'm super grateful for this family I love them to death but there was no oven there was no stove (laughs) like nothing I like you saw it when you first met me I was living there and I remember meeting Heath and he was like well, I could go to you. Like, you don't always have to drive to me. And I was like, mm, that's okay. <laughs> I li- it was like a little closet. Like, it was really tiny, but I loved it. Like, I, yeah. cause I, I felt comfortable because the family living in the main house was like my second mom. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, oh. I have people here. Like, I, start, I made friends at the studio. Like, I made connections. I got signed with an agent. And I was like, okay, things are working. I think she charged me like $600 a month for it, which is still, that was my paycheck. So, like, I was paycheck to paycheck for a yeah. while and but then you did your thing like you worked hard to get what you had and- yeah i had to do what i had to do i mean pan express was great pan- <laughs> <laughs> I can't even well, you worked at pan express out here yeah yeah Hold it. When? Right. I was when I met you. She I was, was still working, working at Panda. When I saw Which one? I would leave your apartment and put my uniform on and go to work. <laughs> and yeah. you never when offered him this? any orange chicken. And oh, nobody's like, gonna help her. The first like what six something months of us dating. Yeah, it was a few Which months. Which Panda? It was in uh, East LA. Imagine I go in. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Keith. I'm pretty sure I saw your girlfriend at Panda. I'm like what? <laughs> I walk in, she's just like, shit. <laughs> so yeah, I had two studio teaching jobs and I worked at Panda Express. And then, so Damn. Panda Express was where I met my roommate. I met her there and then we just moved in together. And then now we're here. That's what we mean by everything happens for a reason. Literally, like it can, yeah. it can seem like the most trivial thing, like in your overall timeline, but like mm-hmm. it serves some sort of purpose, which is right. like, really cool. Exactly. No, right. everything that I went through helped me to get to where I got to today. Damn. Damn. Even, even like the worst it. things that you could be put through. Like they make you strong and they make you right exactly who you are as a person. Yeah, That's I'm so, so cool. grateful for it. It was cool. Like when I didn't have a car, I was like, oh, this is cool. I can walk to the grocery store. Like it was you become self sufficient. You can you, and more yeah. independent. Do things right. on your own. You like and I appreciated to- it. Like then I saved up for my first car and I did this and that. Like it was like it was nice. And then I knew I always knew I had my family. My mom was like, come back whenever you need to. Like they yeah. were just like so supportive. My mom knew. Like she was like, you're gonna figure it out. Like it's gonna be fine. Right. Every time I come home, she, her mom's always like. I was so close to having Mariah come home. Yeah, because I, like, even when I met you, I would just have, like, panic attacks and mental breakdowns, and I was just, like, I wanted to go home so bad. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I need to go home. Because I was also working professionally out here, but, like, I was booking jobs in New York like that. I think it was because New York is very, like, ballet and proper dancing. Oh, okay. And I was a hip-hop, like, flipper, and they were like, yes, let's get her. Coming to L.A., Nobody even looked at me. Every audition was like 800 people. I've auditioned for everybody you can think of under the sun. They won't even look at me. They'd be like, next. Because everybody yeah. around the entire fucking world comes to this exactly. city right. for everything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, I just I just don't really like stand out. And like, well, and a lot of anything. stuff in LA is typecasted. And it's like, they know right. the person they want, like what they want them to be. And exactly. Look like. Before we continue, this episode is brought to you by Honey. If you don't know what Honey is, you must be living in a beehive, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we all online shop a lot. But did you know you can make online shopping even easier? And- I better? did. Well, you can with Honey. Honey is a free online shopping tool that saves you money online. Honey automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them directly to your cart at checkout. Imagine you're shopping on your favorite sites like Macy's, Target, Sephora, Lululemon, DoorDash, you name it. And then all of a sudden while you're checking out, a little box drops down. You click apply coupons, wait a couple seconds, and then bam, you watch the prices drop. It's as easy as that. It is magic. So Heath, what did you buy that Honey saved you money on? This is going to sound so funny. I actually just bought my mom a toaster and surprised her with it. I just sent it to the house. A toaster? I, I, yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, when you get older, little things like that, like a surprise, just kind of, you know, it's nice. It's cute. It's cute. Um, so I actually ended up saving quite a few dollars on that purchase. Um, and it's just so easy. Like, you just forget about it. And then when you're at checkout, it just pops up and you're just like, 
Right. That's right. I can save money. I might as well do it. And guys, I'm still like buying stuff for my house. I got like this. I got the, these day beds. I got a pergola. And a pergola. A oh pergola. My God. Sorry. And, <laughs> and at, at checkout, I just – my the prices just dropped. It dropped by like 20%. It, it's insane. He's literally not making this up. Like I was with him helping him pick out this stuff. And when we were checking out, it literally was just on the sign. He's like, oh, my God. Like I totally <laughs> forgot. By the way, thank you for that. Thank you for coming over and helping me out because <laughs> yeah, I'm really well, bad at like shopping online. <laughs> and it's not just you saving money. Honey has saved over – 17 million users over two billion dollars so not using honey is literally passing free money and it's free to use and installs in just a few seconds plus it's part of the paypal family now so get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash unfiltered that's joinhoney.com slash unfiltered guys it's a no-brainer literally everybody's at home right now shopping online you might as well save the money like it's it's not gonna hurt you it, 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 it literally it will only help <laughs> all you're doing is saving money you're doing nothing more than saving money what do we say baby set it and forget Get it, it. Mm -hmm. Download Honey, joinhoney.com slash unfiltered. Please just do it. You won't regret it. It's so weird. I didn't realize how many parallels there were like to your story to mine, but like it's very similar. Really? I came out to SF knowing no one. Like I was 20, so I like turned 21 oh, in SF. Wow. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> look at them. Look, look at them go. But it is you. you I said, "Man, who? <laughs> you look. Look at them connecting. It's so cute." <laughs> you look back on your journey and you realize that like anything that's gonna come up next, like I can handle it because look at what I've already gone through. That's exactly what I think of, yeah. and that's what you told me to think of. Mm -hmm. You're like, "Look where you are. Like, why are you upset? Right. Like, it was just like." It's just drain. It's very draining. It's very draining because you work so hard, and then for people to like tell you you're not good enough, it's like it's oh, it like sucks, but. You I got two TikTok second guess okay. yourself. Like I, I've, I thought, I thought a few times about going home to Florida, and then I would like go home to Florida to visit, and I'm like, <laughs> right, <laughs> I'd rather not. Yeah, what yeah, am I gonna like, do here? Like I've had times where I like I went back to Florida for like three months. Like I was like, I'm done with LA. I, I can't, still can't believe you did that. That was like, I still can't believe I came back. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, for a long time, like the, the you, it was like a very like hard, very very period bad for time. You. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, no, it's so crazy. Like, but that happened in my life to put me where I am today. Yeah. Like I came back, like I, I collected myself and I was like, I'm going to become stronger because of this. And I will capitalize on the fact that this happened mm -hmm. and yeah. do something about it. I honestly, like I, I watch your guys' channels sometimes and I, <laughs> And like I there was something that you said that it, it's like very true. It's like I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything about what I've gone through because it right. got me to where I was today. And I totally, yeah, totally agree with you on that. Like as as shitty and like crummy as some of the situations were, it's like, right. If you didn't go through those, you wouldn't like have learned anything. So yeah. I just feel like, yeah, I feel like I, I, I can see it in like in both of you. I mean, I don't know. I haven't known Mariah for that long, but like you guys have grown so much since you've been out here. And I feel like I've grown so much since being right, in Cali yeah, yeah. and like being on my own and just hearing Mariah's story. It's like, I've like, everyone needs to go through these like hard times to like, it sounds, it, it sounds so cliche, but like you have to go through those darkest times to like, you have to get, get rock to, bottom to right, come back like up. It, yeah. it, and it's so true. And if you feel yeah. like you're at rock bottom, uh, it sounds stupid, but appreciate it right now because it's going to help you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like just making things like positive and, being appreciative of those little things and you'll just be like what am, like this sucks but like life is like still amazing yeah and half the time it's only for a period of time like coming here yeah. now like knowing that i have you guys here it's like i don't know if i like la i don't know if i'm gonna like fit in here or whatever but i know i have you guys and like you guys have mm. Oh, he about to cry. Hold up. First guest to cry. But like you guys have always made me feel very safe no matter what environment i've been in and like being like gay and whatever like we used to go to like Cowboys, right? And, like <laughs> Roundup. Like we don't even have to explain those places because you know that I wouldn't fit in there. But like right. I felt very <laughs> safe there with you guys because like, Good. you know, it, it's just like I, I I was around you and we would always have so much fun together. And like even though it wasn't yeah. a place that I would ever go to on my own, like. I was around good company because it because it is still really bad in like Florida. Like there's yeah. there's a couple of people that like I I know out there that like I'll like I'll see when I go out I'll see them and they still have the same fuck bullshit mindset that like gay people aren't people and like everybody has their own opinions and whatever it, even if it's bullshit like fuck them like you don't have to like waste right. your time on them. I just couldn't believe that there's people like that, like that out there still. It's so and, like how how people could be so hateful and closed minded like today that it's just so sad it's yeah. sad because like you don't know 
where people come from. Right. Like I, it's so cliche, but don't judge a book by its cover. Like it's so, it's that right. simple. Yeah. It really is that simple. I feel like I was being like, I was being called gay before I knew what gay was. Like, uh, but I knew it was an insult. That's all I knew about oh it. My that I was being singled out just because of like who I was. And this is like elementary school. Oh but, my like, God. Yeah. It's wacky. Like, I don't even know where they heard the, and I mean, you know, <laughs> hate, hate is learned sometimes. So I don't know where they yeah, heard of course, it. Yeah. But like, I mean, I just always, you just got to like find your tribe, honestly. And sometimes it's hard because you haven't found them yet, but like keep chugging along because yeah, in elementary will. school, like I was, I told you guys, like I was yeah. friends with all girls. Like they always protected me. I always felt very safe around them. And like, they always stuck up for me. So I was like, they made it okay to be who I was, even though they weren't like a part of my community, if that makes yeah. sense. You know what I mean? And boys back then, like just boys were just fucking dicks. Like it was the girls that were actually accepting and like wanted to be everyone's friends and mm -hmm. like wanted to bring people together. And the boys were actually fucking right. dicks. And it's like, the whole just like boys don't cry mentality. That's yeah. like, you know, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. The tough you know. guy act. You know, like exactly. what I got going on for me. Right. <laughs> baby, you could be whatever character you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Baby, baby, you voice, baby, you voice your opinion. You go do it, man. All right, um, we gotta wrap this. I have a flight to catch. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here, baby. And I'm get, I have a tattoo appointment. <laughs> oh my, I need to do. Kenny, what do you want to do tonight? <laughs> I'm gonna get a glass of water. I and, Ooh, and I'm gonna, slow down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some dinner, babe. <laughs> yeah. oh, relax, relax. Baby, I need, I need to go see Hidaya and the family. You know, oh. I'm like jealous. I want to go home again. I haven't seen them I want like Hadaya to come out here so bad. I know. First guest? Second guest. Oh, it would be <laughs> perfect. Don't blow me out of She's the bar. So that good. would be cool. She's so funny. She's such a natural. A gift. We a just gift end up making this podcast cast like eight people. It's just like <laughs> all in a of circle. us in a big ass. We have the camera on this rotator where it just goes. No, it's like that 70s show. We just <laughs> yeah. 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 We have to film it on the 360 camera that David used for that one video. Where it's <laughs> like just, you could all spin the... around the room to like look at whoever you want. Dude, that was like David's first big like brand, brand deal. deal. I remember no. that we were all like so excited for him. We're like, all right, let's get this done. Come over. And I remember throughout the whole thing, we were just like, oh my God, this is going to look so weird. But uh, yeah, you got to you gotta get going. Um, yeah. So once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the podcast. As always, everybody knows that we post on Monday the audio. Tuesday is going to be the video on YouTube.com slash Zane and Heath. Um, we are removing, we are canceling. How do you say this? We are canceling the merch. Oh. Cancel the merch. Discontinuing the merch. Uh, the merch. I don't want to hear the word canceled for the rest of my life. We're discontinuing the merch. So if you want to check that out, it is on sale right now. So make sure to do it while you can. Yeah. Yeah, big things coming. I better be getting some of that merch before it. Oh, I don't no, even baby, have we're, merch, we're Kenny. Baby, I don't even that have That merch is being canceled. We can't. <laughs> Just any excuse it. to it. not give us anything. Okay, then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. how I was being paid for this in merch. <laughs> but all right, guys, we love you so much, and yeah, I hope you have a great Monday and Tuesday, and yeah, fucking yo. Kill this week. <laughs> kill, sorry, I. <laughs> what did you just say? Kill this week. Like kill it. He said, and, oh. and yo, fuck kill this week. Fucking, yo. Fucking, fucking is that bad? Man. Kill it, yo. Kill this week. Yo, no, we were. Just, week. I was just laughing at the way, like you were like, and uh, yeah, yo, fucking. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what kind of character was that? Fucking kill oh. this week, dog. All right, hey, love you guys. Bye. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.